welcome to a new Harry's Garage video. This one, I'm now going to feature the tractor. Hopefully you've watched a sort of part one where I've talked around the combine, how that works. Now I want to introduce you to sort of the new age of tractor, where tractors have got to in 2018. This isn't a monster tractor, this sort of mid-range 150, 170 horsepower tractor, but it had some of the sort of up-to-date features that you now uh, have on tractors today. But before we start, back in the uh, barn, I've got an old grey fur I just want to give you a tour of where it all started first. So this is the basis of all tractors um, you see around today. This is the, the Grey Fergie as it's known, Massey Ferguson. This was produced from 1946 to 1956 and it has a amazing number of sort of uh, pointers on this that for the future. The key one being it had hydraulics on it and at the back there's these arms that come up and down and it's exactly the same on the case today um, controlled by hydraulics that was the big thing that this grey fergie introduced it was incredibly basic um, your brakes was here the handbrake was just a little thingy on the ratchet there you flick in and that's a handbrake um, can't remember the size of it these sort of 30 horsepower something like that i lift this up there's, there's the diesel tank um, water up the front air cleaner, oil base, um, just a hand throttle on here, four speed gearbox, this is a late edition having a hoop, you had no cab, um, a sprung seat, so now we have the air spring seats, but um, the fact was it introduced hydraulics and that's everything that sort of has tumbled through to where we are today. Also to point out it was two wheel drive, cleated tyres, just the same sort of design as you see today. Um, but two-wheel drive because it was all about maneuverability and they didn't really have the horsepower to need four-wheel drive. Right, let's get back to the case. Okay, now we're back with the case again. Got to remember that Grey Fergie, that's 70 years old now uh, compared to this, but as I say, there are some things, some similarities, but some been major changes. First of all, basically all tractors are now four-wheel drive. They're traction devices, they have the horsepower, they need the four-wheel drive. Then there's the engine which has completely changed. This is a six cylinder, 6.9 liter diesel, um, intercooled turbocharged engine, and also has a 24 valve head. So very different. Tires, they're enormous now compared to that little gray figure. The tires probably came up to here. Now they're these monsters. This, these are 38 uh, down to there, um, 650 wide, much, much bigger than they were. And we've got a cab. Um, air conditioned cab, all insulated, no noise, drive it forever, air sprung speed seat and that sort of thing. Fuel tank, huge fuel tank, 330 litres uh, of fuel, add blue because it's 2018, um, Euro 4 on these, mud guards, etc. So you think, well, what's where, you know, what's the similarity to that Grey Fergie? Well, if we just go around the back and have a look there, and there are some key features that are still the same as on the Grey Fergie. Okay, right. First thing that hasn't changed since in 70 years, you still have these arms. You, you carry implements on these, and they're hydraulic control and go up and down. That Grey Fergie had a little box in it. Now we put all sorts of things on these that can carry big weights as well. Fertiliser spreaders, you can put sprayers on, you can put cultivators on. The PTO drive, that coming out of the back of the Grey Fergie, is exactly the same here. We also have a hitch now uh, for taking trailers. Difference now being that this I can lower to the ground using the arm, the hydraulic press of the arms, put it on the ground, take it off, go and put another one on and then lift it up with the hydraulics. So some things haven't changed. Oh, and the hydraulics, we've got spool valves and things, but as soon as um, yeah, that Massey introduced uh, hydraulics, that was the takeoff of where the tractor is today. But anyway, to control this thing, I'm gonna take you inside, have a look around the cab, because that is a complete sea change, and especially just in the last few years. Now, this is where the big change has been with tractors and also on transmissions and things like that. Whew, it's quite hot today, so I'm actually gonna start it up. It starts on a key, uh, fairly normal. First thing you'll notice is as I look out the front, I've got no instruments whatsoever because they've all migrated either into the column like this, um, so I have a clear view out. They've also tucked the exhaust behind the pillar as well. This is this thing all starting up. And this is the other big change with tractors today. 
gone to the sort of dials and taco and speed, I've got a little taco up there. But actually, I just have all my controls here. And I have this one controller here, which I moved back to the forwards, a bit like the combine. But this time, I have the gearbox on here. I have forward and reverse, I'll show you in a minute. And I do everything on there. I mean, it is completely different. And it, when you first get in, you think, it's, oh, I don't know how anything works. Actually, it's so simple to operate, it's untrue. But it's just getting your first sort of fright when you actually see out. Amazing visibility out as well, with the, the one-piece window at the front. Um, the side ones just have doors either side. They've sort of shrunk it down so it's like an emergency door. Normally it just acts like a window, but it's just extraordinary how much glazing they've got. I've actually got a little window here um, just gives me vision. If I had a loader on the front, I can look out at the roof and see like that, but I don't really tend to use it. What else is there to show you in here? Oh, the seat. So if I'm working uh, behind, something behind, there we go, I, could, I swing around. Everything swings around with me. If I, so that helps me if I'm going to look out the window at the back a lot. I'm going to have it at this sort of angle. And that's a sort of uh, throwback to when you go ploughing and things like that. I don't tend to do much of that. We're on grain carts at the moment. I've got to get this trailer back to the shed and get it tipped. So I'm going to drive off that in that direction. Now, you still have a clutch, but I have 19 forward speeds. I can't remember how many reverse, something like seven or something like that. Right, to so set off, first thing I do, I have a clutch. Any time I use the clutch, I bring it out of park and I put it in forward in this case. I can actually reduce forward reverse and I'll shuttle there. And I go to move off. And I use the hand throttle and away we go. And I'm setting off I see in seven. Now I can press a button down here. It's got a grain trailer on it. And that means everything is automatic now. I just set off and it'll do the gear change as and when it, it deems necessary. The other thing I find amazing with a tractor like this is if I'm just shuttling around, I'm turning the header. All I've got to do to go backwards is press backwards. I press backwards on the gear lever. Oh, suddenly I'm going backwards. Now I've changed my mind. I want to go back to the grain shed. Press that button. Do nothing. Remarkable how, how they've changed. A lot of horsepower on this is 150 rated. Now, again, like the combine, they have these two sort of settings that have a rated horsepower and then a max power. Um, this is 150 and it boosts up to um, 175 or 190 on the PTO. Really very clever and I have behind me, I have about, um, well it's about 14 tonnes in there, 5 tonnes trailer. I've got about 19 tonnes in the trailer behind me. The tractor weighs six and a half, so I'm about 25 tonnes. Handles it like you wouldn't believe. No problem at all. This, this, I had a JCB fast track for this, and that has sprung axles, but then it just um, compromises slightly on traction because you can't have the bigger uh, tires and wheels that this has got. So what they do on a tractor like this is have a sprung cab and a monster um, air sprung seat, a bit like we saw on the combine as well. And then they get this, they still have the speed capability. This uh, is 50 kph, this tractor, uh, top speed. If I just do this, off we go. And it'll shuffle through the gears, we're up to 15th gear now, 16, 17. Uh, we're doing about 30 clicks down here. I can see on here, I can see what speed we're doing, engine temperature at 84. I'm using nine litres of fuel an hour. Um, doing 3.5 kilometres per litre. Um, what else can I see? Engine power. I'm using 23% of engine power. So it's just playing with this thing and it's over 20 tonnes. The Massey would just collapse under the thought of trying to tow a trailer like this and this thing just makes mincemeat of it. I can't get over how much tractors have changed. The stepless gear change, huge revolution because you're not in between gears, I'm not touching the clutch. If I'm doing a heavy draft operation, I'm not going to touch that clutch because I'm always in the right gear. I've got a choice of 19 and I just change them on a button on here uh, or leave it in auto, take my pick. 
Right, I'm going to reverse into that tray, uh, gradient behind, so I choose reverse. And back we go. This is a horrible shed to come back into as you go from bright sunlight into complete blackness. And there's a dividing wall halfway down just to catch out people who don't know it's there. Past that. Actually, do is just put some lights on. Right, so show me I'm not quite where I want to be. Put it back. So I actually pressed the clutch yet since leaving the field. Well, I'll have to now. So what I'll do, I'll just nudge up to where I can feel the wheat. I suddenly sort of slow up as it goes back into the wheat that's already there. There it is. Right, we're in the wheat. I'm going to touch neutral and then hydraulics or hydraulic tailgate on a trailer like this. I lift it up, that goes up, I on this joystick and tip the trailer. No need to get out of the cab anymore, keeping a dust free, air conditioned um, environment, no dust. I can't tell you how much nicer that is than it used to be. And that we've dumped 12 tonnes a week. On the floor. Because I'm in neutral, I actually touch this and go forward rather than do it on the gear change. And just use the clutch. Just forward. Tip it up a bit more. don't go through the roof with the top of the trailer because that'd be embarrassing and I think we're empty. That goes on dump, the trailer comes down. Let's swing this one around because it's not really interesting. There we go. There's the trailer coming down. And once that's down I can then close the hydraulic tailgate again. Close the gate. That's it. And now I'm back to the combine, go get another load. But I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is just put a cultivator on now and then just show you what it's like in the field doing a different sort of job. Okay, so I've dropped the grain trailer off and I've hooked on this Vadastad carrier cultivator, which is the thing we use straight after the combine. If you've baled and the bales need to go or your chop straw, it goes in and it just mixes soil and you're trying to get the weeds to germinate and you spray them off before drilling. So that's its general plan in action. Um, but it just shows the versatility of um, tractor, modern uh, tractor unit. This is just a power plant to stick all sorts of things on, do all sorts of jobs around the farm. That's what they get used for these days. And again, all this automation makes life very easy. I control it again on the joystick uh, rather than separate spool valves. I'm just gonna get into position. In the, in the field. Here we go, it does a mad fold this machine. There we go, far in the field. I press neutral and then I put the machine down, first stage, like that. And then I reverse. With a bit of luck, this will now go over like that. There it goes. And the wings come down, as you can see there. Down they go. There we are. Right, go forward, I'm into drive, I want to lower it into work. Four wheel drive and all that sort of thing. No, it's all automatic. If it senses it needs four wheel drive, it will do it. And there we are, set off in knife. Ten. I like to use this cultivator at about 11 kilometers an hour. 10, 11 kilometers, 12. And there we go, we're off at about 11, I mean 12. And then I can just sort of balance how much fuel I want to use. I'm at 18, 20 litres at that speed. I'm 67% uh, percent of engine power. I can go down again and use more revs. Still at 11 kilometres, not quite. 
but now I'm at 25 litres an hour, so I'm better off in a higher gear, come back down at 12. I could try 13 at lower revs, let's see where that takes us. 19 litres, so actually, I'm better off in 12th gear, and then, yeah, I'm down at 19 litres an hour. It's got another neat trick, this thing, so when I get to the headland, I have this crazy steering. I can change the steering ratio. I don't know why car manufacturers don't do this. Or so I'm rocking down the field here, level quantities. I've got to do a sharp turn at the end. And what it's done, by altering this, this is actually all um, electronically monitored power steering. I'm half a turn, lock to lock. So if I look at the front wheels, I get to the end of the road, I have to lift it out of work, and I do a turn. It's half a lock, and I'm at full lock, full turning circle like that. I'd almost turn back into my own work like that, which you wouldn't normally do. I'd turn the other way, and I'm back working again. That's such a handy feature to have. On a tractor like this, I'm, I'm having to steer it and put it in its position. For an extra 5,000, 6,000 on top, I can be satellite controlled, and I can actually press a button, and it will lock on to the satellite, and I wouldn't have turned back into work here, it would have turned it in exactly the right line, have a line to follow, take my hands off, and the satellite will keep it on, on that line. And you get this perfect field with no overlaps. Again, it saves on uh, work. Really clever. I haven't actually fitted that some Charlie really likes to sit on this tractor, I will do. This tractor is around a £70,000 tractor, as thought they were about, which I think, for the amount of tech on board, is a bit of a bargain compared to what you get for 70,000 in a car. So there you go, there's a first sort of insight into a modern tractor on, uh, on this. I'm sort of thinking of calling it Harry's Farm. It is of interest to do some of the farm operations and see how we take a crop through the year. And make some notes on the comments below this vid, see what you think. In the meantime, thanks for watching, but keep watching, more videos will be coming along very soon.